Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Play Industry Giant 2. Industry Giant 2 is one of my all-time favorite tycoon games, sort of business simulation, transportation game, all kinds of things all rolled into one. And unfortunately, Industry Giant 2 was simply not compatible with more modern versions of Windows. I could not get my disk copy to run on anything newer than, say, Windows XP. And that always made me really sad, and today I open up Steam, and oh my god, it got released on Steam with compatibility apparently for Windows 7, 8, and 10. Works perfectly fine on my computer. A couple of people have reported a couple issues here and there. So, you know, cross your fingers. Your mileage may vary. But I'm going to be playing this game. Whether I make videos or not, I don't know. But we're going to play at least the first mission together right now. Um, so, I, let's just jump into it and we'll look into it. Oh, this does include the expansion. So, we've got some extra campaign missions there, which gets me really excited because I actually never had the expansion. So, I'm really looking for, to, forward to giving those a go. We're just going to go ahead and load it up on medium. We're going to play the first campaign mission. There are a ton of maps, a huge campaign. Um, and you can also play... So, in campaign, you have goal. Like, for example, each mission here. Here, I have to get to 10 million bucks of turnover in 15 years. So, from 1910 to the end of 1924. There's something called the Endless Mode, which is just, you load up a map, there's no goal whatsoever, you can just play as long as you want, which is very relevant, because as you go through time in the different eras, you will um, get new vehicles, new types of goods and things to trade. Um, it's pretty dynamic as time changes. So here's my mission here. Start from scratch and, within 15 years, establish a business enterprise with an annual turnover of no less than 10 million. It could well turn out to be essential that you keep a sharp eye on your surroundings. At the moment, there is a feeling that a new era is about to dawn in this region. This may give rise to some interesting challenges and opportunities. So this was the Greenland map. Oh, in fine weather, harvest yields will be good. Excellent. And here we go. Here's our little area. Now, this is called Greenland, but the, the names are not particularly... Greenland-ish, I would say, but that's okay. So we got a variety of towns all over. Um, it looks like the biggest town that we've got is here, Red Oak, sort of the capital of the region. Lots of population and lots of opportunity to sell goods to people. There are a variety of resources, raw natural resources on the map. For example, over here, we've got, I don't remember what that is. Which one is that? Precious metals and also copper. That's good to know. We've got a potential for glass over here. Lots of trees, which of course you can produce um, wood goods from. Uh, both pulp for paper and also just actual lumber for other construction. We've got oil over here. Some steel there. Some copper there. Oil over here. Lots of resources all over. Now... One of the things you can do in this game is you can play a lot of the transportation games. If we look here, we can see we've got access to trucks, trains, and harbors. Um, however, it's actually quite nice early on in the game if you can avoid any transportation, if you can avoid the overhead of it. And for that reason, what we're going to do is over here by Red Oak is we're going to start our first industry. So here's the town. We've got some old-timey cars going around. That's great. Now, what can we produce? What can we sell? Well, if we go to the shop menu, we can open up a variety of shops. We can open up a grocery, a toy store, a house hold store, a fabric shop, a furniture store, a hardware store, or a bookstore. I don't know why like this is a fabric shop as opposed to a fabric store. Um, they can sell a variety of goods. Now, if I take something like, say, the toy store, and I put it up on the, the map over here, you can see buildings highlight in yellow. This shows you um, the buildings that will be covered by your shop. And then we get a little tooltip that comes up and shows you the demand. This is the demand per season by month. So for example, if I built the kids shop here and we look at say the last row, you can see the demand for, for fuzzy bears, I think is the way they call it in this game. So stuffed animals would be two per month in the spring, three per month in the summer, three per month in the fall, and six per month in the winter for Christmas. Whereas the item just above it, which is the joke items, there's a much heavier demand in the f in the spring than anything else because of April Fools. Yeah, the game is pretty creative that way. If I put the building out here, you can see the demand would be dramatically lower. Now, that's great, so I want to put it here, but one thing to keep in mind is if I put the toy store here, I'm not necessarily putting another good, so we have to figure out what kind of resources we might want to produce. Uh, groceries are always a very, very solid thing with demand for a lot of different types of food that we can produce, so like we can just sell them produce directly, um, which is pretty easy because um, unlike a lot of the other resources, produce can grow in more places. Although I say that, I think it needs more green area. So for example, if I take farm over here and a farm can produce a variety of goods, if I mouse over here, you can see I would produce 29 cotton um, at the harvest, whereas over here on the shore, I'd only produce 14. And over here, uh, I'd only produce six, but other goods would be better. I'd be producing a lot of, what is that, corn? Whereas here, the corn yield is weak. So depending on what goods you want to produce, you want to tune it 
where you put it. Here, yeah, we're getting like no fruit whatsoever. Pretty decent fruit production over here. You can see if I get too close to the town, the town becomes unhappy about that. And I think that will impact the town's growth or the demand. I'm not sure. Um, we could go and build some logging camps over here in the woods, which might not be a bad way to get started. Uh, it depends on what our final good might want to be. What could we build with woods? Well, actually, we could build a bunch of furniture. So wooden boards can build tables, picture frames. We would need leather to be able to build seats. But that would be two, two household goods we can produce just by starting a wood industry, which is certainly pretty tempting. I think that's what we're going to do. Nice thing about uh, logging industry is it does tend to start doing the turnover right away as opposed to waiting for the crops to come in. I think we will do some crops, but not right away. So here, as I put it down, you can see a green area highlighting where the trees will come from. And the number above is just how much possible goods can be produced over the course of the game before it gets depleted. It doesn't have anything to do with the rate that it gets produced. So I'm going to go ahead and put a lumber camp down right over here. Now, by itself, it won't produce anything. I've got to click on it and tell it what to produce. As it turns out, a logging camp only produces cut wood, so that's pretty simple. So we'll start that and hit OK. Now, it'll do one tick, and then it'll very quickly complain about the fact that it's not going to have any storage. So we're going to have to build a storage for that. There we go. So it's complaining about that right away. Ooh, that is loud. Let's zoom out a bit. So we've got storage of a variety of different sizes. I think we're actually going to be pretty good on a medium storage for now. So I have to make sure the storage is within range of the logging camp so that it can store it there. And I'll go ahead and put it right over here. There's all kinds of fancy tricks you can do with storage later on, but this is going to be perfectly fine. So now we're going to put our cut wood over there. Now we can't use the cut wood directly. We're going to want to build a sawmill. And I'm going to build it just out of range of the city. There we go. I'm going to build it over there. And the sawmill is going to produce wooden boards using cut wood. Now, one thing that's very important is if we look at the logging camp, it'll produce 12.5 units per month. And our sawmill will only produce six per month. So we have got two choices. Either we build two sawmills or, and I'm going to do this at first. Oh, that is still so loud. I'm going to bring down the utilization of my logging camp by half. So that way the pace sort of works out a lot better. It's a lot more balanced. Now, what are we going to do with this? Well, I think we're going to start building some furniture. So again, I'm going to try to be out of range of the town right over here. Build a furniture shop. Oops. Oh, a new train has been released. Sorry. And, and I cut the, uh, the animation short for our factory. My bad. So a new vehicle just got released. That's good. Okay. You are very loud. So we're going to go ahead, we'll start producing, say, wooden furniture. So this is just five, it produces five per month, but it needs two wood each. So we actually need ten wood to keep pace. What about the picture frames? Okay, picture frames is nicely balanced. The supply might, or demand might, might not be the same. But we'll get started on that. So now we've got a nice, even, balanced production in our current chain. So very soon, picture frames will start to apply, or appear in storage. And then we want to sell it. So, uh, is it furniture store, I assume, where that gets sold? Yeah, you can see the demand there, 222. Two, two. We could put it there. This is going to be like the sweet spot. Whatever we put there is going to sell the most. Um, actually, this is pretty good sales right over here. It's not quite as good, but I'm going to do this, and we'll save that spot maybe for like a grocery store later on. So it is within range of um, our factory, so or our storage, so it will start selling these things. We can tune the price, which will affect the demand, for example. I'll leave it where it is, which tends to be the most optimal. And there we go. It's already made its first sales. Supply and demand. We can check the sales over here. We've already started to sell some picture frames. That's fantastic. Okay, but we also want to be able to sell those tables. So obviously we're going to need some more wood for that. Um, I mean, I can go ahead and bump this up to full. Then we're going to need to also create some more um, boards. So I'm going to do that. It's going to overlap a few trees, but that's fine. So make some more wooden boards right over here. So now we're making 12 per month. And we're going to build another furniture industry. Uh, that is still in range of the workshop, which is great. And you are going to start building tables. Get that going. So this is actually going to need 10 wood per month by itself. So it's, we're going to actually fall a little bit of a shortage of our, um, of our wooden boards, but it's not the end of the world. Now, one thing I'm going to make sure to do here is my logging camp. I'm going to make sure that it can only use one slot in my storage for the um, the cut wood, the raw boards, so it doesn't overflow. And then the same thing with the sawmill. I'm going to make sure it only uses, at best, one slot. So again, it doesn't overflow with that. And then it leaves seven slots, which I'm going to use for the furniture uh, over here. Um, so I can set it universally, or what I can say is, of my seven slots, you can use um, 
say, three for the tables and four for the picture frames. That just makes sure that you never get in a situation where your storage is filled up with something else. Just a nice little idea. So at this point, we've avoided any need to build any trains or anything of the sort, and we should be turning a nice little profit. We can go ahead and check our balance sheet down here. Um, actually, turnover might be interesting. 71 grand so far, that's okay. And of course, most of our expenses so far is like various production, right? Our actual overhead costs for our factories, production costs. So we're not turning much of a profit, but a tiny bit of one. We probably want to get a little bit more started. So what I'm thinking now is we're actually going to go ahead and start um, growing some crops and set up a, um, a grocery. So ideally, we're going to want all the crops to show up within range of a grocery store, which I think I'll build there. Now you can see, if I'll build my storage, this close would cover that um, furniture store. So if I put it here, it should be able to cover the... Um, the grocery store. So I'm going to put that there and then we're going to try to get as many crop growing as possible. Nice thing about crop growing is you don't have to do any more processing. So if I built it, um, well, you can get a little bit more here. Okay, let's build it here and start on grain. Actually, I don't think we can sell the wheat directly, can we? We can get it planting. Now, this has a planting season. You can see it seeds in, Oct in April and gets collected in October. So we're not going to get a harvest from this this year. That's important to know. Um... Yeah, hold on. So, our grocery store. Can you sell grain directly? No, we're going to have to produce uh, some sort of baked goods. Um, food industry. Okay. Oh, that's too close. Okay, good. I can build it here. It'll be in range of the storage. That's good. Build that there. Oh, it's a little early. I just realized we're not going to need this for you uh, quite yet. You're going to build so you can do... Okay, for donuts, we need the wheat and milk. For bread, we only need the wheat. That's good. So this will be a bread thing. But also, I kind of like the idea of the donuts as well. Um, so let's start uh, maybe a cattle ranch and start producing some milk. So we're going to make sure that it's in range of that. Milk production varies a little bit. Looks like this is going to be fine. 5.6 units. And I think you can sell the milk directly as well. Got leather and meat. Oh, that's right. We could start producing leather for our chairs too. If I built uh, a cow ranch over here and just used it for leather, we could start producing chairs. Okay, we might look into that. Um, for the food industry, let's make sure. There's 16 slots. Let's use... Um, okay, the farm, you actually need quite a bit of storage. Because this will come in in bulk. We were getting, what, 28 units? Now, 28 units is just two st stacks. Because I think each stack can stick 16, so that'd be 32. So, let's go ahead and, just to make sure it's fine, we're going to allocate up to four slots to that. And up to two slots to a finished good. And a couple of slots for the milk. And we'll use that for now. I could have just, like, said, don't accept any goods and then increase that way. But this is probably fine to do it like this. Milk is going to accumulate there. Since we will have some milk, we may as well go ahead and set up our grocery store. Um, not going to have huge sales, but I'll have something. What was the demand? Uh, milk over here. 444. Yeah, quite a bit of demand. Again, that's four per month during those seasons. And we are producing 5.6 per month. So we'll end up with an excess that we can use to produce donuts later on. It's good. We might want some more grain farms. Um, actually, we actually also might want to put in some extra storage, um, which might not be a bad idea. We may end up having to ship some things around since we're so close to the town. It would not surprise me if we end up building another storage over here and just started moving things with trucks over to here as a final product. But we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, I'm tempted to go and just build another ranch. Actually, why don't we build the leather one over here? Can we do that? Well, actually... Let's find a good spot for it. So cows, we want to find a good number of leather. 1.3, that's pretty poor. 1.4, yeah, they need grazing land. 4.0, 4.2, 4.1. I think we'll have to build it over here and then um, cart it over that way. If we want to do that sort of thing. 
And this is monthly production, by the way. Uh, this is not total supply. Chicken. Oh, we could build a chicken and sell some eggs directly. That might actually be nice. Can I get it? No. Okay. 5.8, uh, 5.9, 6.7, 7.4. Ooh, 8.5. I think that 9.2 was pretty good. Let's go ahead and build it there. We're going to sell more things to the grocery. So you're just going to make eggs. And yeah, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to have to build another storage over here. And it'll get used for a variety of things. Um, I'll build a large storage because there's a good chance we're going to have <clears throat> fields with grain. And they really need... Um, they actually need quite a bit of space to handle the harvest. The worst thing is if you harvest a field and you don't get to use it all. We're going to just build a simple little truck terminal. Um, and we're going to truck things back and forth. Because it's a little bit short. Tell you what, I'll build a medium one. Trains are by far the most efficient. Like, it's cost efficient. Moves things very quickly. We're going to do that. Minimize the distance. Um, but for this, I think the vehicles will work out okay. So we're going to connect them with the road. Ooh, new product. Calendar. Needs paper and cardboard. We can produce calendar. Big demand in the winter. That's very, very tempting. We might look into that industry. Um, we're going to go and hire a vehicle. So they both have the same speed. This has a higher or lower operating cost, but higher up front. This has higher repair cost. Tell you what, we'll, we'll pick up the whitey over here. We'll say okay. And we're going to run a route. You're going to pick up eggs from here and you're going to deliver them over there first truck in service a bit loud but very satisfying okay there's our truck it's going to keep shipping eggs i suspect we're going to need more than one of them so let's click on that truck we're going to clone you and clone you again there we go that's maybe too many actually i suspect that was one too many i didn't see one pop up right away and i think i clicked a little too fast so it's going to deliver goods over here. There we go, because that reaches that. Okay, and that'll be nicely in range my town. The grocery, how many eggs do you want? Yeah, four per season. And this is producing nine. Okay, so we're going to have twice as many eggs as we need, but I bet you we can use the eggs for something else down the line. You're, you're not capped for egg storage, so we're going to make sure to do that so that we don't get too many of them over there. They're starting to sell right away. Um, yeah, the food industry. Do you have anything that needs eggs? Fruit juice. Roasted peanuts. Huh. What's the season? February, so in two months, that will plant. I would like, I think, I'm going to build another wheat farm before April. Except I don't have any money. Never mind. And you know what? I'm going to trash this. We don't need that many trucks. And that's just going to be overhead. Red Oak, the towns do grow, by the way, if you keep shipping them stuff. So that's nice. I think we are going to turn a profit. So I don't think we'll have enough money for another farm. That's okay. We're going to keep this factory sitting idle for now, which is perfectly fine. Then we're going to start building donuts. As soon as we've got some wheat, we go crazy for donuts. Maybe even cronuts. And yeah, this storage setup, this is really not efficient because... Um, we might want to build, like, another storage here that takes the wheat. This will only be uh, finished goods. Right now, it's okay, because this food industry can reach there. But ultimately, we're going to have to do something to switch things around. It wasn't thought out quite carefully enough. Hopefully, it's okay. All right, over here, no one's complaining. Oh, furniture industry actually is routinely complaining about not having enough cut wood, which seems likely. In fact, we don't have any enough raw lumber. We're going to need to upgrade a lot of this. We do actually have maybe too many goods here, and we're not selling them. You can see we're getting an overflow of that. Okay, so right now the fact that there's not enough um, raw goods to finish production here is actually okay. Because they're not really used, but they're not using everything. Or we've got an excess of stuff to sell, so it's okay they're not running at full efficiency. What I'm actually going to do is explicitly bring these down to 75%. Bring down some of our overhead a little bit. It'll also enable us to accumulate some logs or some cut wood. Actually, logs. Uh, planks. Wooden planks. That's the word I'm looking for. We'll accumulate that number, and, and then we'll be able to start a new industry like, say, bringing some leather over here for the cows, which would be quite nice. Alright, eggs are still being moved over there. There's a stockpile of them, which is nice. Again, hopefully we'll be able to um, maybe use them in manufacturing something. Maybe we'll unlock ability to make cakes or something later on. I think that sort of thing does actually exist. It's not in the list yet, is it? No. 
But there will be more products that unlock as time goes forward. There we go. This crop is being planted. Very nice. And yeah, I think the maximum you could actually get out of one of these fields is 48. So this is not even like the super sweet spot. But it's close to town, which is nice. So in October, we'll get a bunch of those and then produce some bread out of that. Or some donuts. Donuts, that's right. With the milk. Okay, money is going up, which is nice. And yeah, the vehicles are, are working hard and are not draining this at all. Um, I'm going to make sure to not overload myself with eggs in the storage. Put the thing on pause if we need to. We could also just lower production. But for now, it's okay. We could also start shipping these eggs to other towns. There's a lot to be said about that sort of thing. We're going to evaluate that later on. Probably what we'll do when we get a good stockpile of like finished goods somewhere. Actually, we're starting to get them here. We could start to ship the furniture elsewhere. So, there's a question. How much would we be able to sell furniture, say, in Dorchester over here? Oh, I don't have the money to afford the shop, so... Moot question for now. Money is going up. We're up to 200k. Good. Let's check our mission goals. What are the turnover looking like? Okay, 300,000 a year. It's a start. Got some birds flying overhead. That's still constructifying. Are we getting a surplus of boards? Not really. I'm going to go ahead and trim... The production down here even further because there's just not that much demand for furniture right now and we can start using the boards for something else we could even set up a little toy shop um, because we can make wooden trains out of wooden boards that might be a thing um, I would like to start a paper industry at some point there's a few things you can do with that paper mill makes paper and cardboard uh, we can the printing shop makes newspapers cards copy books those new fangled calendars as well Lots of demand for that, I suspect. I think that might be the next industry we actually break into. Well, we're going to develop our food industry a little bit more. So it's still May. What I think I'm going to do is put a cut in this video. When we come back, uh, come October, we're going to get our first uh, wheat harvest. Start making those donuts. I think that'll turn a really good profit. Because it'll uh, do double duty on our milk, which will be nice. In fact, I suspect we actually might need um, another cow ranch at that point. Because we do sell some milk directly, and then we're going to start using some of it to make the donuts. The trucks are a little bit loud, but the sound of them does make me kind of happy. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching uh, this episode of our, I guess, our Let's Play of Industry Giant 2. Really enjoy the game. Uh, personally, it's one of my favorites. Absolutely. Oh, it doesn't actually pause the game if we do this. I'm going to have to find the pause hotkey. Um... See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.